In this After Effects tutorial, we'll be creating this electricity title reveal, obviously inspired by the latest Sonic trailer, and I wanted to make something relatively close to it, so let's get into it. I've got my text layer set up here, and the color I chose is almost black here, I don't want to go all the way down, and I got my stroke enabled with one pixel. Let's start off by creating a new solid for our background, which will make it black, and I'll create another solid and call this Saber and let's add Saber to it. Now, if you're not familiar with Saber, it is a free plugin that basically creates all these type of effects, energy and electricity, and it is free, so obviously why not get it? Now, the preset I'm gonna be working with is the very last one, which is called Zap, and it already creates this lightning kind of look here. I'm just gonna set my cost to my score here to my text layer and select my text. Now, let me go ahead and lower the core size and bring the intensity down just a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and set the starting size to 10 and the ending size to something like 80. So we basically have this fading of the mask. Go to frame one, set a keyframe for my mask evolution. Let's go to about three seconds long and I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees. So it basically just goes along the path of my text layer. Let me actually boost the intensity just a bit here. Now we'll go to the first frame here and I'm gonna set my end offset to zero, set a keyframe for it. And let's move just a bit here, set it to hundred. And I'm gonna set another keyframe right about here for my starting offset. And right about here, I'm gonna set it to hundred. Let's hit U to bring up all the keyframes. I'll select these keyframes, hit F9, go into my graph, and I'm just gonna drag this like so. So we sort of have this electricity going around our text, sort of like in the trailer. Now I'm gonna duplicate this layer, and let me actually rename this one to light. And here I'm gonna set it back to default. I will disable the end and start offset keyframes and just set it to 100. Let me bring down the intensity and set the core size to maybe two. I will also bring up the starting size to maybe 40. Then I'm gonna set both of these layers to additive. And on my light layer, let's bring up the keyframes of my mask evolution. I'll just bring it to the end of my composition here and maybe give it one full evolution just to sort of go around while the text is being revealed. The only thing I wanna add here is a glow up right in the beginning. So I'll set a keyframe for all these four settings. Let's hit U to bring them up. I will copy these keyframes to the beginning. Let's lower them down. And I'll paste them once again right about here. Then on my middle keyframe, I'll bump it up, sort of like a light up effect here. Okay, and let's select them, hit F9. So once the text is coming in, it's just gonna have this glow up in the beginning, which will add to the impact. Now let's animate the text as well. So I'll just bring up the scale here by hitting S, set a keyframe, and I'll set it to something like 10 in the beginning. And again, select my keyframes, F9, and go into my graph. So I've got this text scaling up, and as you can see, the glow up is helping the impact and all the sable layers are following along. Now let's go ahead and add some lightning effects around our text. So I'm gonna duplicate my first sable layer here and let me call this one electric and I will isolate it. Now here I've already got the mask sort of animated. I'm just gonna bring up these keyframes closer like so. And instead of using the text layer, I'm gonna select my pencil and create random shapes like so with my mask. So again, just randomly create these shapes here going in all sorts of directions. Okay, so once we play this back, you can see that we've got this sort of Lightning coming from the middle here. Let me just disable the mask evolution, make sure it's set to zero because we just want them to animate once and maybe adjust some of the masks here to come from more of the center of the text. Let's go into the flicker option here. 
I'll set the intensity to 120 and max out my speed and select mask randomization. And what that's going to do is basically add a flicker to each of these masks individually and obviously randomly. Now to give these lightning strikes a bit more of a distorted kind of look, I'm going to go down into the distortion here, glow distortion and bring it up just a bit and maybe bring down the scale. And then I'll go down into the core distortion, bring up the distortion amount as well, not too much and bring up my scale. So this is how we create these lightning strikes. Obviously you can use some stock footage as well, but I figured this is an easy way to incorporate this as well. I'm just gonna bump up the size here a bit. So maybe 2.5 and bring up the glow just a bit higher. So once we play this back together, this is what we've got. Looking pretty cool. Now let's add a background here. So I'll create a new solid here. We'll call this gradient. I'm gonna add a gradient ramp and select two colors here. So one's gonna be bluish and the other is sort of red here. Let me bring them to the sides here. Now I've got this stock footage of a fog here, which is actually looping, which I'm gonna use for the background of this video. So let me just scale this up a bit here and I will also set it to screen. I will duplicate it, right click it, transform and flip it vertically and offset the timing here. So I have some of it on the top and the bottom of my screen, more filling out the composition. So we've got something like this. Then I'm gonna go into my gradient here, bring it above my fog layer. Let's enable it. And I'll set the transfer mode to color. So it basically goes on top of my fog layers here. I'm just gonna bring up the opacity down to maybe 50. And let's enable everything together. Okay, maybe lower the opacity a bit more because we don't want to see too much of it. But it gives us this nice gradient kind of look here. We can always adjust these colors and the position as well. Lastly, let's pre-compose everything and we'll move all the attributes. I will add a curves effect to pump up the colors. Just give this a basic S curve and create a new adjustment layer for my shake effect. If you have any shake preset, that is fine. I just have this shake that I've created on a previous tutorial, which you can go ahead and check it out. And it's basically this built-in wiggle expression with some exposure, just using a few keyframes. And I'm just gonna enable motion blur here. So once I play this back, you can see I've got this nice looking shake here, which is basically built into your After Effects. And just like that, I've got my shake built in without any plugins. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.